family, you're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. We have a couple of teams who come off losses just one week ago and now want to flip things back in a positive direction. It's the Ravens going up against the Browns. With that, let's hand it over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. They've got the call of this week 12 matchup. Thank you, Larry. From the shores of Lake Erie, EA Sports has coverage of the NFL from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland, Ohio. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. They come into this one off a bit of a clunker last time out, a loss that ended their five-game winning streak. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, we're in November now, so this is where you really need to settle in, start getting down to business. And in baseball, they talk about the dog days of August. November, these are the dog days of football, trying to get in position for the big push. The final playoff push is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So here come the Ravens now, ready to get the football for the first time. And leading him out, their veteran quarterback. And the D-line pinching together must be expecting the run. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And this is caught on the sideline. But no, they'll say out of bounds. He caught it but was not in bounds. Incomplete. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Off the play fake. He'll look to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. A big play there. 70 yards. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. Well, that's how they envisioned it, get the football to start the game and score it. And I don't know if that was scripted, was it an audible, or was it just a play call that they had in their pocket? No matter what, they had the right call on against the right defense, and they end up in the end zone. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And led out by their veteran quarterback. He's been around a while. They don't celebrate birthdays for him. They just cut him up, see how many rings he's got around the middle. He has been in the league a long time. They don't give it here to his running back. He takes this for three to the 29. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And tough going there as he'll only get it up to about the 31. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. It's really simple to say that they know their identity, that they are a passing team. But one of the reasons that they're so successful, they know how to mix in the run and make sure that they keep the defense off balance and not able to just simply say, let's go get the quarterback and disrupt things. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. When you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. And a look at the offense that is hoping to put some points up in bunches here in this one. Seven yards to go on second down. Watch 
And they'll go with a ground attack here. Call it a gain of a couple, and that's going to leave them with a third and about five. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. And this defense looks for one more stop here on third after the run. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you throw an out, so many things are going through the mind of the receiver. Catching the ball, timing it up with the quarterback. Are my feet going to get down inbounds? On that play, all those things going through his head might have caused him to drop it. We get a glance at the Browns' defense as they file into position. And it's the first quarter, but they gave up the score last time. How important is it here not to fall two scores behind? Extremely important because not only are you trying to avoid being in a big deficit to start this game off, you also want to get into a pattern where that offense has the advantage. You've got to find a way to turn things around. This is the series to begin that. Yeah, we'll see if they can keep them off the scoreboard here for a second time. And that linebacker group today could be very key. As we were preparing for this game, you pointed out to me as we were watching film that the linebackers look like an elite unit. I agree with you totally. They move around, fly to the football, and take it away from offenses. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there. And now it'll be third down. I can't help it. I'm just sitting back in admiration right now. This defense tells everyone that plays against them, you're not beating us running the football. That's who we are. That's what we're about. It's not going to happen. If you're going to beat us, you better pick another way. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And here's the Ravens' defense as they head back out there now. They did their job last go around, forced the punt, hoping for more of that here. They got off the field. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Get off the field, turn the ball over to their offense, and kick back and enjoy a little bit of water and rest before they have to go back out there again. Back out there now, hoping to hurry up and get more water and rest. And that's the type of play that'll fire up the defense, hold them to one yard on a first down run. It'll be interesting to see if the offense decides to press the run at all, but they'll abandon it now after gaining only one on that play. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone could have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. And he showcased the spin but couldn't do much else as he's wrangled down. Call it a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up second down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. That's a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. On play action, they'll throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks. And when an offense is doing a nice job selling the play action pass, 
a lot of responsibility shifts to the linebackers. They're the ones that have to determine run or pass and get to the proper places on the field. Now a play fake here on first down. Finding time. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. These guys told us, these guys being the coaches, they wanted to really stretch the field, get the ball down deep. They were able to do that here. And you know when you stretch the field, you often leave guys in one-on-one -on -one situations, and that allows your better athletes to go up and get the football. I love the preparation that they put into this. They made it a priority, and they got what they expected. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. That is caught at the seven yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Now the Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third down. Could be a blitzer. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big tight end. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Browns are within an extra point of tying this thing up. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game. Roberto Aguayo now for the point after. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're gonna start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Possible run anticipation here as the D-line sandwiches together. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's a fumble. And this is picked up by the Browns. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, big tackle, knock the ball free, anything you can do to slow them down. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Throwing right, and that's complete. Ten yards on the pick up there. And it'll give the Browns a first down. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. A touchdown apiece here in this first quarter of play. Seven all is the score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 12. And the Browns are going to have a first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. I always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Oh, nearly picked. 
And maybe lucky there. This guy doesn't drop many defensively. Third down. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. He went full scale, loose, flexible, finding a way to catch the ball in some traffic for a key first down. Yeah, really a nice job of adjusting to the ball in the air. Not the most accurate of throws, but able to adjust and make the grab. No, 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 no. Check. Patriot! Patriot! Detroit! Detroit! Here we go! From the four-yard line, it's first and goal now. And he's in! Touchdown, Browns! A great effort there! Hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Browns have taken the lead. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how we're going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now the Browns' defensive unit trots back out. Coming off that fumble recovery last time, so maybe they come out here with bigger eyes, a little bit more excitement. No doubt about it. And I would hate to be a guy in the NFL nowadays that has the football in his hands. Because in the old days, you just worried about getting tackled. Now, they're trying to strip the football, create the takeaways, and that's often more embarrassing than getting knocked to the ground. Have they gotten much better since your playing days at stripping the football? So far beyond what we used to talk about, our thing was just securing tackles and if turnovers were a result of the tackle, that was one thing. But now they want to secure the tackle, the next guy in, he's working to stripping the ball out, creating takeaways, getting it away from the offense is crucial. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it. And he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. The Ravens send their punter out now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And take it right on the 30. <laughs> A great return there of 22 yards. And the Browns have a short field in front of them now as they take over first and 10. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot. Maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. 17 yards on the pick up there, and the drive will continue. Love the call by the offensive coordinator, recognizing the situation very well, calling for the play-action pass and completing it. On first down, he'll drop to throw. Gonna throw right side here, complete. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. So he got his hands a little too far outside. The ref caught him, threw the flag. They'll wind up losing a full 10 yards on the play. They go play action here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. And they went big on first down. Proves unfruitful. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. Are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Call it a six-yard gain. Still plenty of work to do coming up. Third and 14. 
And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it's a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. So he nailed that one through despite kicking it into the teeth of the wind. Well, let's play a little golf here, shall we? That's a low iron shot, almost like a stinger. And somehow he finds a way to get it through the wind and through the posts. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calls. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. He lost two there, and it's third down. When you're putting together a formula for winning defense, it's exactly what we're seeing in this game. Controlling the line of scrimmage, attacking, and changing everything so that now they're playing in the offense's backfield. They're playing an excellent game. He's got time, and he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack, and that'll bring up fourth down on the big sack with a loss of five. The Ravens send their punter out now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Two left to play in this second quarter. More from Cleveland after this. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. So third and five, third and medium here. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. And he will find his man on the outside. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, He's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Back to throw now on second and 10. That is caught right at the 10-yard line. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. 
They'll set up to throw. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. My high school coach, John Ford, used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket. And he throws it. And that's going to be caught for the Browns. Touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver as time expires in the first half. And the Browns add six to their lead. And they extend their lead, a little added cushion into the lockers. What a way to finish. Tremendous way. That's momentum that they carry in with them. Can they convert it and bring it back out to start the third quarter? Aguayo on for the PAT. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Browns wanted to put last week's game behind them, and they have so far today. The Ravens are in a tough spot, but will look to force some mistakes and stay in it. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Ravens opening up on offense. The quick pass and completion is made, and he's gone as he sprints to the end zone. They strike first in the half. Browns line up at the 36. Middle of the field, the pass will be caught, and he'll end up picking up 23 yards on the play. Browns now later on the drive. The catch is made after a quick pass, and he capped off the long drive with the TD. We're brand new at seven. Browns have it early in the second. He'll take the run up the middle, and this five-play drive goes for a touchdown. The Browns is up now by seven. Browns take it at the 11. The pass will be completed into coverage, and it cap off the eight-play drive with the TD. The lead now at 17. All right, Larry, indeed a one-sided affair to this point as we get set for half two. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Short kick here, fielded about the 17. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. here to his running back and they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44 11 yards on the pickup and it'll give the Browns a first down well that's the desired outcome coming out of here in the second half of being able to run the football and establish a little bit of pace and maybe even a bit of dominance at the line of scrimmage and they want that to continue way too early to think about this being ball control time but the way they're running it, you got to think. They may want to continue that and see if they can go ahead and grind their opponents into submission. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on the offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? They, they, let's, see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22 yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that plan any down. Back to throw now on first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Their big-bodied receiver, his ninth touchdown of the season, and the Browns add on to their lead. 
As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. And the lead is now 24. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And now the Browns get ready as they head back out there. They were able to force that three and out. That led to a touchdown. And defenses obviously love three and outs. They want more of that. They created a very short and not too sweet stint for the offense by getting them off the field that fast. But it set up their own offense, gave them a little spark, and they took it downfield and scored. Now the question, can they do it again? Let's see. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. I thought guys that were over 30 weren't supposed to run the football this well in the National Football League. How about that veteran leadership? A big-time run combined with some nice blocking by his offensive line. Showing that the ins and outs of being a veteran still has his place in this league. His odometer is not totally turned over yet. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe you keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Very difficult night for the guys on offense. They've got to be looking at each other in the huddle and on the sidelines. How are we going to find some open space to complete a pass and find open room to run? This defense all night long has squeezed down the passing lanes, made plays on the football. It's really been a thing of beauty for them. He's got to figure all day long prepping for the game. They had to have talked about it again and again. Squeeze passing lanes, and we'll be in great shape. Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. You know how we get focused at end of the half and end of the game situations about how much time's on the board and, you know, what you need to do? Sometimes you don't have to worry about that. That's just smart football. You know, that kind of a lead, staying in bounds, it burns clock, even in a situation that we're not really focused on it. And the numbers comparison, and something tells me he likes the numbers a little better for this week. What do you think? No doubt about it. And, you know, we often look for the deep meaning about, okay, why did this happen last week and this one, this. Sometimes you just play better. And we're seeing that from him. Looks happy, loose, running around, and making plays. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and they have a little bit of power and you find a way to pick up first downs. He's got his man on the crossing route. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen, but everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know they got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. They'll give it to him right up the gun, and he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. A gain of three, second down. 
So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket. He plays a lot. It just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. They'll run the option left. Still on his feet. It's a gain of three. Up. Back now here on EA Sports. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. And they'll go on the ground. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I would run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Only able to pick up a yard, and that's going to leave them with a long fourth and goal. This offense bent the defense in their long drive downfield, but once they got within sight of the goal line, the defense went to dirt break mode and is stiffened. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. A great play there with touchdown number two in the game and now 11 on the year. And the Browns continue to roll. And my friend, I think it's safe to say that this game is pretty much deceased at this point. It, it's <laughs> taken a knee, so to speak. It is definitely this victory formation. Take the snap, take the knee, call it a night, you know, call it a game, call it whatever. I agree with you totally. I don't think there's much left to get except for those who want to run up the score. <laughs> I knew this was over about a minute ago when you took your stat sheet and just flipped it over your shoulder in the trash can. Yeah, that's that's, my, yeah, that's similar to the guys cutting tape off yeah, right before yeah. the game's over. We know this thing's done. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if there's got, got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. And the offense facing a third and six. Not too many things get to a quarterback of this magnitude, but I think it's safe to say that pressure can get to any quarterback. Now he's obviously a great franchise quarterback, but felt the pressure. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Looks like a nine-yard loss, and it also brings up four. The Ravens send their punter out now, standing right on his own five-yard line. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. A chance for us to look at this Baltimore defense again. They have to recover a little bit. Last time, they couldn't stop the run. They really couldn't stop the pass either. And it wasn't just physically. It's mentally because the offense appears to be a step ahead of them. No matter what they call, it's working. So they've got to get something figured out. And usually, you need a big play to get things turned around. They gave up the touchdown on that balance attack last drive. Now this drive. 
It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Third and five, so they bring in an extra defensive back. An expecting pass. He'll drop to throw, and he's got his man on the out route. So there you go, holding by the offense, and that'll push him back. Changes everything now as you try and figure out what your playbook has for you. Longer yardage situations, tougher to execute and pick up first downs. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he takes this one just shy of midfield all the way to the 49. And chalk that one up as a gain of 34 on third down. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody has that ability, they want them on their team. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Really tough drive, but that run help salvage something there because now there's something positive that came out of it. They got to see good blocking, good push by the offensive line, wide receivers trying to get involved, a good run by the back, and now maybe it'll be a catalyst for them to look at going forward, watching it on tape. Maybe they can keep incorporating that type of a run into their offense. Now a handoff here to his running back. He showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Second and just one. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. Going to give this time to the tailback. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. And he'll give it here to his running back. No, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Well, I'd say that run's pretty emblematic of what we've seen all day long. No matter what they've done on offense, this offensive line has controlled the line of scrimmage, giving them time to throw it, run it, do whatever they wanted. That's why there are points up on the board. And right now, the psyche of the offense, we're in control, and we can do it. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And to me, that touchdown allows you to start grinning widely on your sideline. I think they pretty much locked this one away. Yeah, that's the clincher, the proverbial icing on the cake, if you will. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. They'll try and throw for it. And he fires one that's it. He's got the lane, and there he goes. A great read, and it's picked off. He's at the 30. And it's a tremendous return as they finally get him at about the 10-yard line. Well, that was almost a four-point swing. The interception, if he had returned it all the way, would have been two for them, but just a little bit shy. And when it's a play like that, you're exactly right with the math. But don't you feel like it would have counted for more if they found their way all the way back to the end zone and gotten the two? That changes the whole momentum, doesn't it? 
And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take in the next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in the game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And the coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start, offense. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. I think the best offenses love to get the ball to their running backs in open space because they have the ability to make people miss. And they also have the ability to run over people. And if you do that throughout the game, after a while, they might just run through some of those tackles and go a long way. Well, we saw him shed a nice tackle on that play. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Browns, they just keep on rolling as they move to 9-2 with a win here. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Minnesota Vikings. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, the problems just get worse and worse as they fall to 2-9 now on the year. And they'll look to get back on track next week as they travel up to Detroit to take on the Lions. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound, as we say so long from Cleveland.